One thing that I've seen time and again is when people are planning to start a business or they're doing a you know business strategy, so often the sales and marketing is either non-existent or it's completely under budgeted on the cash flow. So, and then, you know, to me, that's a huge red flag. I think that entrepreneurs tend to really underestimate when they have to start thinking about how they're going to generate sales and what their marketing strategy is going to be to drive sales. We're recording? Woo, we're Excellent. recording. I'm sitting here <laughs> with Ruth, the one and only president of Rev Squared. And I can't wait for you to meet her. She, oh, she's right here. <laughs> thanks, Hi, Richard. For, thanks for coming to the podcast. Great to be here. <laughs> um, I am happy to present you because I've been working with your company, Rev mm -hmm. Squared. Yep. I'm trying to formalize my sales process mm -hmm. and uh, do this targeted strategic stuff that we all say, but you know, you need a system to do it. Yes. And yep. you're helping me with that. I am. I am. It's been going well. Thank you're a great guy to work with. Yeah. <laughs> a lot you. of fun. Um, how did you get into sales? What's your background for people who might not, not know of your company yet? Yeah. So I, ha so I've been doing sales actually since I was a teenager and have always had an entrepreneurial streak. Uh, and then I, um, I was, you know, doing kind of the nine to five for many years. Didn't like it. Always wanted to be my own boss. And it was actually, uh, I hated a job I was in. No, I love the job. I hated the leadership I was working for. And, and, and at the time I was miserable, but then I realized in hindsight, it was also the catalyst where I finally said, I'm going out on my own. I'm, I'm sick of this. I know how to run a business. I can do this. And how that started, long ago was that? That was about 15 years ago. So long time. And, and I haven't looked back. So I, I've been my own boss since then. And I actually started out doing a career counseling business. And that was going quite well, not where I wanted it to go. But what I found is that clients were hiring me and then uh, I was having companies hire me to counsel their staff who were having to be transitioned into other work. And then from that, they would ask me about other business skills that I had, other business work. So then it kind of morphed into doing operations for them, sales for them. And then I realized I'm actually really enjoying the sales process side of things and helping them build out sales systems. And that ended up morphing into Rev Squared, which is my B2B sales agency. So I really focus now on developing, as you know, uh, implementing uh, sales systems for clients. That's amazing. What do you enjoy so much about it? What is it that you <laughs> love about selling? I, well, I'm a, that, that I'm a, turned you on yeah, to I'm, I'm a people person yes. one, for, for one thing. So I, I'm one of those odd people who actually likes kind of getting on the phone and talking to strangers. And, you know, I love learning about people and sales is so much, a it's a lot of, it's a, well, it's a, it's a people business, right? So it, it's about meeting new people and I'm very interested in learning about people, but it's also for me, like I've been doing business development for Oh my gosh, 25 years. Like I've been, I've been, even when I was working my nine to five, I was doing business advisory stuff. I was doing business consulting. So it, I've always been doing business development in some, in some fashion. And one of the things I've noticed, because I have, I've written business plans. I've reviewed business plans for entrepreneurs. I've, I've, you know, consulted on them. And one thing that I've seen time and again is when people are planning to start a business, or they're doing a you know business strategy, so often the sales and marketing is, that component is either non-existent or it's completely under uh, budgeted on the cash flow. So, and then, you know, to me, that's a huge red flag. I think that entrepreneurs tend to really underestimate when they have to start thinking about how they're gonna generate sales and what their marketing strategy is going to be to drive sales. So. You know, that really has, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that, right? I actually do sales and marketing plans for companies and, and it's, it's a lot of work, but it's work that should be getting done well before the business starts. Because if you don't know how you're going to sell this great product or service, then how are you going to generate revenue to keep the doors open? Right? So yeah, so it's just kind of a, it's not an obsession, but it's, it's something I understand it. I enjoy doing it, but also to me, it's, it's the foundation of any business, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have a business. If you're a for-profit business, you need sales. And mm -hmm. if you don't have sales, you're, you're, I mean, it's kind of simple math, but yeah. So what's the skill 
that makes a great sales person? Mm, what good is question. the skill? Do you think or skills? Talk to me about the skills that yeah, you like I, to see. And yeah, and you said I was I was fun to work with. So what mm-hmm. is it that makes you see somebody, the potential in them, and and say, yeah, I think this could work? Mm-hmm. Or, or what is it that you like to see in somebody that has potential with sales? Yeah, I, that's a very good question, and it's it's something that that I think a lot of entrepreneurs really need to think about because eventually, you know, depending on your business model, you're going to be hiring, right? So you need to, and if you're going to be hiring sales reps, you need to be thinking about who is it that we want to be representing our company. And I've said to you, right? Like I check in with you on, you have to sign off on everything I'm doing. You have to approve the scripts, the email templates, because I'm the first face of your brand when Mm -hmm. I'm picking up the phone, when I'm talking to prospects. So it's really important that when you're hiring a sales rep, that you, you know, you have to look at that person and say, is this the person who's going, is that person a match for our company's culture and values? Does that person, do we resonate? And can that person really represent our brand well? So that really should be question number one when you're thinking of hiring someone. The other thing is, do, even if they may not have all the skills you're looking for, are they coachable? Are they open to being trained on how you do business, right? If, if they're coming in and they're going to tell you how they're going to do it, chances are there might be some friction there. So you want them to come to the table with their own ideas and skills, but they need to be open to working with your system. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important to have that system in place before you hire people, because you want them to come in and generating revenue as quickly as possible. Every sales rep, should, it, it's the it's the one salary you're paying in your company where you need to be seeing a return on investment, whether it's three times, four times, whatever you expect them to be bringing in, mm-hmm. you you need them to be generating revenue as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. So in fairness to them, you want them to be walking into a ready-made system where yeah. you can say like, you know, what we did to, here's the CRM, mm-hmm. here's our, here's our process, start working with it. We, we can tweak it as we go, but this is what we want you to be working with. So someone who's coachable and I'm giving you a really long answer, but mm-hmm. it's a really important question, right? Um, and the other thing is I, I do a lot of hiring for, of sales reps for clients. And so when I'm doing the interviews, one of the things I'm always looking for is at what, what questions are they asking? right? And it, it often happens in interviews where sales reps will, you know, sales reps are typically, they're, we're confident people. I do sales, right? Confident people. We know how to sell. We know how to sell ourselves really well, usually. But the challenge is if you have a sales rep in an interview and they're really focused on their compensation and they're not asking key questions that they should be wanting to know, to me, that's a red flag. Mm-hmm. So things like, you know, what are the key, what are the KPIs you're expecting me to work mm-hmm. to? Um, you know, are you going to be providing leads or how much prospecting do I need to do? Right. Th- just things like that, that kind of the, the fundamentals that any rep should want to know. And that to me is a sign of a good rep that they know the industry. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> a lot to be looking for, but really important to have a sense of who you're looking for, for sure. So what is Rev Squared's ideal target customer? Who are you looking for? For, for my business? For your business. I So I, I do a lot. So I only do B2B, yeah. right? So my clients, so so it's not B2C. Yeah. Um, and I, I've done quite a bit with like manufacturing clients, mm-hmm. engineering, things like that. Um, so, you know, in, in this case, you're, you're, uh, you're a new one for me, which is, which is great. Um, because I, I love the, like, it's such an interesting industry. That well, let's you talk in. about that. Yeah. Now you are <laughs> a budding writer or have I you am. written? Well, I've, what, I've written. What's going on? I, so I've written. So I really want to I, get to the <laughs> artist side of Ruth because it's not all just sales and business. Yeah. Which, you know, interestingly, that's another skill to look for when you're hiring, no, not to get off track. Writing skills. Yeah. Writing sc- skills are absolutely essential. Make sure you're asking for cover letters because... You don't want them to start a sentence with just. With just, exactly. Like, uh, exactly. I'm just reaching I, I'm out. just reaching. No. Yeah, you, you want to know that they know how to... <laughs> I, I was really, I was really yeah. on his case, but, yeah. but, but, but if you, if you think back to how, how we did the email, right? So, yeah. so, um, 
Yes. So I, basically I try, writing skills. Writing skills. You're very interested in the right. film industry yes, yourself. I am. But because you're a writer. I am a writer. So I, I'm a I'm a professional business writer. Yes. But also, um, I mean, I, I love creative writing. I've written a children's book, but but I have I really have always wanted to do something bigger with my writing on the creative side. Because I spend my days doing business writing, which I love. But it wasn't kind of feeding my yeah. love of creative writing. Sure. Um, and I started exploring writing screenplays and realized it's a it's it works for me. I love I love writing. Di- I love developing a story, but thinking how it's so dialogue heavy. Of course, how how would the, what would the person say in that? Like what's you know what would really where where the audience would say, oh yeah, that's a really good line, right? Where which I do when I'm watching a movie. So yeah, I started. Um, I taught myself. I just picked up a Sid Field um, book on how to write a screenplay. And I, I read it and I like literally, I'm so A-type, right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, Sid says do this. So I did that <laughs> exercise. And and from that, I wrote my first screenplay and I'm working on a new screenplay, which Is this I, your second? It's my second screenplay. And, and how and close are we? I'm almost done. Almost I'm almost done. done. February is my deadline to have it finished. February, and, end but, of February. Yeah, and I'm the type, you know, th- there's kind of this, there's all these different ideas of how do you write a screenplay. Sure. Uh, a, a lot of people will say, just, just get it out there, spew it on the page and go back and, and edit. I, I do a lot of editing, but I tend to edit a lot through the process mm-hmm. so I don't get it all down and then go back. Um, I do a lot of, like this screenplay I've been working on for, I'm going on four years now because I have, I'm on my third iteration of the plot. I've changed the plot and changed the plot and now I'm loving where it's at. I love my characters. I love, honestly, I love just, it's such an imagination process, right? And I love just kind of going into my film in my mind and, and being with the characters and evolving them. It's, it's really, it's okay. So I'm going to date this yeah. February 1st, 2024. Yep. Okay. Into the future. We're going to yeah. make this movie. We are. Won't that be something when it, we get to look it, back it at this be. clip? I know you're going to be you my producer. you finish writing it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will. The, what, what I love about it is it's, Well, we're going to meet through our prospecting, all the people yeah, that are going to help us exactly, make it happen. Exactly. It's all interconnected. Yeah, yeah. And and the love that, that, that companies have of being in North Bay. Like my film is set in Northern Ontario. Okay. And I have, uh, so I, there's certain things I like to do. I mean, granted, it's my second screenplay, but mm-hmm. I, I, so in this one, like in my first one, I have Indigenous characters. Mm-hmm. Not that I think, I mean, at this point, th- there's so many, there's so much amazing Indigenous filmmaking going on. It's not like they're, they may say they're still underrepresented, but I just think that the more that uh, Canadian films can make that more mainstream, right? Where they're just, yeah. where it's not where we say, oh, did you see that one has an Indigenous character, right? Yeah. So so I've, I'm just, I'm loving how that's evolving too. And it's interesting because I have, I do a lot of research, right, as I'm writing. Yes. And so I'm, um, I want to include um, some Ojibwe Mm-hmm. language in it, mm-hmm. which I don't know. So I'm kind of, I'm researching dictionaries and mm-hmm. I'm going to have to get that all figured out in terms of the proper use of language, but I'm writing that with the Ojibwe language. Nice. So it's, it, you know, it slows me down a little bit, yeah. but I think for the viewer, yeah. it, it's, it'll be more interesting. And I, for me, it's really important to be as authentic as possible when yeah. I'm creating my characters. Mm-hmm. I actually called a, a First Nation to get some input on some of the stuff that I'm doing because, you know, it's, it, I don't want to perpetuate stereotypes, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So how important is it to be authentic, not only in uh, are the characters we develop in a fiction context, but mm-hmm. in sales? Mm-hmm. What's the link there with oh. authenticity? Is there? Is there? Absolutely. Is it, yeah. Yes, that's such a good point. Yes, for sure. I, it, sales is about posture, right? In terms of we want to be confident. Yes, you see, I'm... <laughs> Constantly checking my posture, but 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 with if you if you can approach uh, like you know when I've been I've been doing a calling for you right and it's uh, I'm representing RFP Media but I'm also making sure that I'm presenting my authentic self mm-hmm. when I'm on the phone so that it's it's so important it, it is it is a people business as much as uh, a lot of it is tech based nowadays we're still selling people to people yeah. right so yeah. it's yeah it's it's really important and it's that, services like i think yeah. at the end of the day um you know video and audio production the service of it 
is actually it's very it's very artistic like it's very really much matters who's holding the camera Mm -hmm. because the camera is just the camera until it's in the right hands with the right skill set with the right vision Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um yeah yeah and that's just something that i think you know is important to realize because when you're budgeting if you want high quality we're so used to seeing high quality content because it's so competitive um, yeah, and you expect high quality content. You have to realize how much time goes into that. Cameras matter, mm-hmm. the equipment matters, yeah. um, and there's a cost to it. Mm-hmm. So to bring it back to what you were saying about uh, in the process of business development, the sales process being considered and the real costs of doing that mm-hmm. is the same thing for the production of content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And the real cost. And when you see how many people work on a film and you see the credits at the end and you realize, what? What are all those people yeah. doing? They're all doing stuff. And, and, and they're really doing their affects- expertise. Sorry to interrupt. And, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're doing their expertise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That That's the one thing. And, and I get it too in my own business. I'm sure you get it too. Like it, any business owner gets this where our prices, what we're charging gets challenged, right? Where we get that mm-hmm. objection. That's such yeah. a common objection. And, 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 you know, I, I've done calls where I've, I've given my price and if I can't get past the objection on pricing, either I haven't demonstrated my value enough mm-hmm. or it just wasn't, it wasn't a good qualified lead in terms mm-hmm. of they just don't have the budget for my services. But it's also really, yeah, to, we have to get across that there's a lot of work that goes in yeah. to what I, to what I do, to what you do. Yeah. But also I have a level of expertise. Yeah. So it's every single step of the way I'm bringing my experience and expertise to it. And there's a cost to that, yeah. right? And I, I have to do, I've had to check myself. Like when, yeah. I'm, when I'm hiring a freelancer for my business to do something for me, I know that if I hire the cheapest person, mm. I'm likely the quality is going to reflect that, right? Mm-hmm. And what I get back. So yeah, we all have to, I think, I believe in paying for what people are worth. Mm-hmm. So, and then I know I'm going to get good quality yeah. in return. So you can either buy it a few times at a cheaper price until you get something you're happy with or, you know, hire the right person at the right time and pay the price. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to be making price. a film in Northern Ontario eventually yes. based with on you. the script. Yeah, with well, you, together. With you, Media. You're stuck with right. me now. <laughs> Ruth, it's going to be brilliant. You know, our story is actually kind of interesting because you hired me to do a little bit of work for you. And then you were doing this commercial for your, your company and yes. everything you were saying sounded to me like something <laughs> I needed. And then we got along so well yeah. that I had you come back. And now mm-hmm. we're well into the launch of the this process yes. that I'm doing for the first time. Although I've been in business five years, mm-hmm. I've never formalized the sales mm-hmm. process. And I know yeah. that's something I needed to do. And I'm really excited to do it. So thank you. You're welcome. For, you know, bringing your expertise to mm-hmm. the table. I'm really, really grateful. And for anybody who's wondering, it's been a great experience for thank me you. so far. You've really made uh, made it interesting. And, and I've learned already a lot, even though we're just at the beginning, mm-hmm. which brings us to yoga. Yes. I started doing it when I was 21. Mm-hmm. And I was in university, you know, the busyness of university, Mm -hmm. but I was also putting myself through university. So I was working a lot of hours and didn't have much time to exercise. And my, the guy I was living with at the time, his mom gave me this old, like little 1970s paperback on how to do yoga. It was like an introductory to yoga. So I like, like the the screenplay, like I'm, I'm get a book, read it, apply it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, of course this was pre YouTube. So I started doing the exercises in Mm -hmm. the, and I would literally, I'd be studying to one in the morning. I might stop at like 11 at night, roll up my mat, do some exercise. And I realized how good I felt. Mm -hmm. I could do yoga and then go back and study for a couple more hours, really refreshed. So I realized what it was doing for my brain, right? That and quick. Yeah, it was amazing. Wow. It was amazing. So I was hooked. And then from there- So was that breathing exercises, postures? Half the half yeah. yoga. Yeah. So some okay. like the really ancient, traditional, yeah. and, and breathing. I yeah. learned about breathing, like just the, you know, you could just do yoga breathing and be a very healthy person. But then if you, you know, the thing about yoga is it is- it, it's it's everything, right? It's mind, it's body, spirit. It's it, it is about harmony with mm. who you are, mm-hmm. and it is such an. The reason I love it is it's so accessible. As a as a poor university student with very little time, mm-hmm. I could, in my apartment, 
do yoga yeah. and really feel good. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that so much of what ails people, it, it, it truly, I think it's a panacea. I yeah. truly do. It is one of those things that anyone can do, but definitely for, for mental well being, just to feel very centered. Yeah. You walk with more grace. Like it's just a very, uh, I think a very curative thing yeah. that's free. Totally. I couldn't afford to go to the gym. But the trick is, this is like with everything, you got to do it. You have to do it. You, you have to do it. You can't just read the book. Yes. You have this to apply where, it. Yeah. You have to apply it and you have to practice. Yes. Because, but, and it's a great my journey, mom sent though. me an article yesterday about the resistance we feel towards exercise. Like our bodies, like in, in our, the way we're, we're built. It was something from the Globe and Mail, I think, or CBC. I'm, I forget now. But it was basically a, a study that came out recently that was saying, um, you know, how how do you break through the resistance? Because mm -hmm. we all have a little bit of resistance, but then we feel so much better after mm -hmm. we do it. And with mm -hmm. yoga, sometimes it's, it's like that, right? Like for me, I practice first thing in the morning and every morning I'm kind of like resist it. Really? A Interesting. Yeah. Huh. But then I do it and every time I'm done doing it, I'm like, why did I resist you it? You feel amazing, right? Yeah, it really it's so totally good. works. It, yeah. It, but you have to do it. Yeah. You have to break through. And I think yeah. the key is the noticing your breath. Mm -hmm. Like you notice if you're uptight when you're not breathing, if you're forced to sit there for 20 minutes or yes. whatever yep. and notice your breathing. Mm -hmm. But unless you take that pause, and I think that yoga does that for us. It's it, just it, it, Being aware of your breath is, you're absolutely right. Breath is a, a key part of our level of health, right? Mm -hmm. If we can master our breathing and be aware of it, mm -hmm. you can actually really regulate your body health and, 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 and also your lung health. Like mm -hmm. I do a lot of yoga breathing exercises mm -hmm. and I know, like I also walk and every, but I know that doing yoga breathing and it's keeping your, your like, it keeps our lungs really strong, yeah. right? Which means we're more resilient to colds and flus. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, it's, and so it, now you practiced with this book, but now how do you practice? What does your practice look like these days? It's Yeah, so I've never stopped doing yoga, no matter where. I, even when I traveled, when I lived overseas, really? I always have had my yoga mat with me wherever mm. I go. And like, not like just yeah. when I'm traveling and stuff. But um, yeah, so it, that morphed into, I just learned more and more. I got more books. And, and then at one point, I'm like, I'm always going to have a little yoga space i've never had like a full yoga studio but a, a yoga space with all of my my yeah. books and my meditation stuff and and i actually i get grumpy if i don't if if, if my schedule is keeping yeah. me away and i can't get into my yoga space you, you need to get there. i get irritable yeah and i'm like i really need to get into my space because it's my also my time just to go very quiet yeah. and reflect and meditate so it's really it's very powerful very very good for mental health Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm glad you're bringing it up because it is, you know, we live in a time where we hear so much about mental health and people's worries and stresses. And I, th I think it's inevitable. We live in a crazy world. We do. And I and, don't and, use yeah. that word, but we live in a wild, contradictory, intense. It's very war. intense. Everything's going on. And it's very intense. Maybe it's always been like that, but I sense people, are, everybody has anxiety. But then the question is, how do we manage it? How do we yes. deal with it? And obviously some people are thriving. Mm -hmm. Others mm -hmm. are, are not. But I, I think, think we live in a helps. world that's very hard to, to turn off. You have yes. to consciously turn off. Especially with the devices. It, exactly. Oh, All God. the technology. We talked about this in our session because I'm like, I'm going to get an email notification at every single <laughs> exactly. task and exactly. prospect replying to yes. it. My God, I'm never yes. going to be able to not yeah. look at my email. Yeah. This would be a disaster. Yes. But, <laughs> but that is the type of world we live in. So yes. having good boundaries mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. probably wise. Yes. We, we need to... The, To me, my, my philosophy of life is I want to, the, the most important relationship we have is the one we have with ourselves, mm -hmm. And I want to make sure I'm having a good relationship with myself, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, that's kind of job number one. Mm -hmm. Do I like, do I like who I am today? How I'm spending my time? Do I feel good in myself? How, do I like how I'm treating other people? Mm -hmm. it, it is, and yoga, it is a, a beautiful gentle, patient journey. Yeah. 
Oh and, yeah. yeah, I say humbling it, too because if you have humbling. ego, you're going to be humbled at some point because you won't be able to lift your leg <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And then you're shaking. But it's and the awareness. Then, then you, it's the yes. awareness, and it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and the commitment to keep at like you. You know, I yes, and and of course, as I'm getting older, I'm like, oh, I'm not quite as flexible as I used to be. So I just have to keep. But I'm more yeah. flexible than my peers. Right. Because right. Because they're not probably doing yeah. it as much. And that's a whole yeah. other conversation about yeah. yoga is. Uh, how it helps you age well, yeah. right? Wellness. So, oh, I could go on about yoga for, for Me days. Me too. So just, we talked about it. sales yes. and, <laughs> and it's all CRMs. Yeah. And we talked about mu- uh, not music, but film. Yes. In the yeah. film industry, we talked about yoga. So the three things I like am trying yeah. to do the most of yeah. Yeah. in my Good life. Good conversation. So maybe that's why we're working together. Yes. Yeah. Lot, there's a lot of synergies, but, yes. but also... Um, I, I think the fact that we both do have a yoga practice, yes. it's you, there, there is a, um, just in kind of, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but, but you, there's an energy, an yes. energy, right? And I think we get each other yeah. on many levels. And I think also that's why you're going to be the perfect, brilliant producer oh, of my film. <laughs> perfect. Well, I'm willing to try. I, I, I think we were talking about this earlier too. You know, we think that some people out there just know because they've been successful, Mm -hmm. probably, Mm -hmm. and they're known for it. Yeah. But when somebody's doing something, like, really, they don't know, like, for the first time, especially, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so to produce a film in the future, I see that as totally being aligned with something I would want to do. But we don't know. But Mm -hmm. unless you shoot for the stars, I saw that football player that's everywhere right now. His mom was saying he shot for the stars, the one with the Taylor Swift. And she's like, he shot for the stars, boy, yeah. my son. She yeah. was so, you know, yeah. and I'm just like, but it's interesting because he did. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so then it can happen. So for me with sales, with yoga, with film, yep. let's shoot for the stars. Exactly. Like let's, Take it. let's imagine yeah. that we can do anything if we are consistent and mm-hmm. can perform. And let's go for it. Let's not imagine that we can't produce the most incredible Oscar nominated film with a story from right here in Northern Ontario, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we have the talent, yes. we have the tools. Yeah, I've traveled enough to know that. Like we are so lucky to have what we have here. Well, and and one of the things that I've gotten to experience doing the uh, sales process testing for you is I'm getting to talk to all of these amazing uh, production company presidents, executive producers, and like just amazing people, very open to having a conversation. But not only that, many of them ha- are, not only are they familiar with North Bay, many of them have done production work in North Bay. They've done filming in North Bay. And across the board, they speak so highly of North Bay. Yeah, They say they've loved the experience. Like, so that really, you know, I had no idea when I moved to North Bay a few years ago. I was already writing screenplays. I had this dream of wanting to have one of my screenplays turn into a film. I did not know that North Bay was, was like, yeah, I had no idea. And I'm yeah. like, I've landed exactly where I should be. And that goes back to the whole idea of the journey, right? Like, yeah. just if you want to do something, just start. It's just It's not even about trying. It's about just do it. And, and you know, the... There's yes, our clip, Adam. Yes. <laughs> There's our clip. Did we end it? Oh, sorry. Oh, covered the- Oh, <laughs> sorry, Adam, I'm a beginner. Um, that's the clip. That's yeah. beautiful. I love yeah. that. Just start. We don't yeah. even have to repeat it. We'll fi- yeah. keep the screw yeah. up in there because it's, oh, it's authentic. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. We're going for authenticity. I- that was beautiful. Thank you, Adam, for doing this. I want you to keep this in there. By the way, Adam Potter is the one who's been like putting together the Richard Forte Presents stuff behind the scenes. He's behind that camera. And uh, he's been great. So keep that in there if you don't mind. And go follow him. It's like Adam, ek, ad, not Adam, but it's like, ad, it'll, be in the it'll be in the thing. To find Ruth, Ruth, how do we find you? Can you look in the camera yes, and tell everybody, you, how do we get can, a hold of you if we need our sales boosted? Call me anytime to talk. I love talking sales. Call me to just, we'll have a chat. We'll see where you're struggling and I will let you know if I can help, which 100% I can. So call me uh, on, you can actually just go to my LinkedIn profile or don't make it my... Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn is Go good. to my LinkedIn profile. You can look up my name, Ruth Van Vierzen or Rev Squared, B2B sales agency. It'll come up. We'll put all that in the show notes. Yes. 
And I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Do you, um, anything else you wanted to say before we sign no, off? That was such an interesting Fun, conversation. Eh? Yes. Yes. I thought we were just going to talk sales, but that no, really you told morphed me into I could something. go anywhere. Yes. That's why yeah, I asked actually, before we started. I said, Ruth, could yeah, I go anywhere? Yeah, that's she true. Said, yeah, yes. Yeah. We didn't go yeah. to Flat Earth this show, but. We did not. <laughs> I don't know how much time. I can say about that, but but uh, I, I, say anything about I, I love the conversation. Thank you. That was really, really interesting. You Thank asked you, good questions. Ruth. I wish you all the best Thank in the next you. year. And in six months, we'll be tuning in and seeing if we talk. hit our target. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Go team. Okay.